Hey guys, welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast, and this is a bonus episode. You're getting a second episode within the week, and we're finishing up what you heard earlier this week on Monday, going over post-show, but we didn't get to all the questions because we were chatty Cathy, so we're getting (laughs) to the questions today. I will give a fair warning. If you're watching this and you're like, Alex and Sue, you're looking vascular, brah. We are. It is a million degrees in this house right now. So um, that's why we look so shredded. And we don't, we're not setting the temperature of our house at a million degrees. I think greater context is important here. Our AC went out yesterday and we are still in the process of getting someone here to work on it. Thus, we are in the sauna for permanent. We yeah. actually, well, we tried to sleep in the basement last night, which it, the uh, the air conditioning for the basement is still working. The main floor and the upper floor not working. And the upper floor is where is really Sue's office working. is and where our bedroom is. Yeah. And it is hot. But yeah, we tried to sleep on the couches downstairs and that didn't really pan out for us either. So <laughs> the, the dogs slept really well. They loved it. <laughs> It was like, oh, this is a dream come true. But And both times our HVAC has gone out has been on holiday weekend, so really easy to get someone out. But we're, we're still doing the thing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get to these questions here. Um, and there was a longer form question because I did post these on my story. These questions are all from my story, but I also posted a form. That form is always in the show notes or in the description box. So if you ever have a longer question, um, you can always put it there and we'll get to it. Well, sweet. Let's go ahead and get started. So first up from Healthy Hales is the biggest takeaway from this prep versus past preps. Um, do you, I would like to push it over to you to ask from a, um, the perspective of living with me within those preps, because I think that's going to give really great insight. Yeah. Um, Living with you, so prep one uh, was when you were in college. So I watched that actually through the lens of YouTube. So cannot comment on that one. He was at my first show, though. I was. Um, we didn't know each other. I was familiar with her to a degree. He tried to pull my chain for a while that he cheered for me. And I used to be super gullible. So I <laughs> believed him, but no longer. Anyway, um, <laughs> show two, which is what? Our wedding. Yeah. So going into what would be show two for you, um, we were in the process of, of um, getting ready for our wedding. And she's also getting ready for a show that her body was in a place that was very unresponsive, um, as well as probably not in a place that you'd ever taken on that level of responsibility of like mm-hmm. getting things ready for the wedding, as well as trying to start your business. And then also being in contest prep, it just wasn't a good environment. And so doing long distance. So we were yes. traveling back and forth every weekend. Um, we also had four close deaths to us during that time that were quite difficult to navigate through. So <laughs> lots of so variables. That prep was was really, really tough on everyone. Um, it was just a, a challenge for sure. The uh, 2020 prep was one in which um, it was it was just tough in general. It was a it was a time, obviously, everyone's familiar with what happened in 2020. Um, and we pivoted very hard within the business to get a everything ready to do everything at home. And so we did everything in our power days that were just like start to finish. We worked from the time we woke up to the time we went to bed and got all this stuff built out for physique development clients to be able to have all the resources uh, to be able to work out at home. So doing that and also being in contest prep, <laughs> it's a challenge. So I, 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 every scenario, I want to give context of like, it wasn't just the prep. There was a lot of factors that were going into it um, that made it more challenging from an emotional uh, standpoint, as well as just being um, your significant other at that time, you know? And so then this prep, um, we had just moved into a new house and had made uh, a lot of adjustments within the the business and those different aspects. And um, it has been nonstop since we moved. And then you also decided to prep during that time. Um, but I would say that being the coach this this time around, and we've talked about this in the in the last um, episode, that you were very cognizant of just what you shared with me of the struggles that you were facing in those different aspects. So it was different in that context. Um, but I would say that this is the most resilient that you were, um, through any of the preps, anything that I don't think that you complained once there was many opportunities to complain. Um, 
you complained a little bit about, a little bit about work. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but I did. Prep, but prep itself, there was not much, if any, complaints. And I was very um, inspired by that. I was very um, just proud of that. I mean, that's something that a lot of people run into every single prep is that they dismantle themselves by bitching and moaning about what they've chosen to do. And it blows my mind because you have the opportunity to throw in the towel. Like if you are so upset and you hate this so much, throw in the towel. But like if you're going to continue to do it, stop complaining. You have the opportunity to change what's happening. So either do it or stop complaining. So side tangent, this prep much better. <laughs> That's with dieting in general. I mean, it is a choice to diet. And then when it comes to a prep, it is a massive choice and privilege to extreme diet. And I always try to keep take note of that privilege and recognize that I chose to do this and it's not fair for everyone else around me to take the brunt of that just because I think that I should be able to complain. Um, so from my own perspective, the first prep, I mean, before um, the last show or what ended up being the last show of the season, I actually watched like my first um, show day on YouTube and <laughs> hilarious. Um, I'm such a different person. And I think that looking back at that 2016 prep, I just had no idea what who even I was. So it's even hard to use that as a measurement or anything because I just didn't even know myself well at that point. I think I did a decent job, but I also didn't really have as many friends or responsibilities. So I just kind of did school, did prep, and that was all. Um, and then getting into that 2018 prep, I remember... Oh, I didn't even talk about that one. Yeah, that was our wedding prep. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, it wasn't a prep for the wedding. It was I was prepping, and then our wedding was very, very soon after. And that was probably my worst prep, um, not only in regards to what we had to push my body to, and Alex was not my coach at that time. Um, I had a different coach, but he, that coach really, really pushed the envelope on what was good for me. And as someone who doesn't like to complain, I didn't complain and I just executed the plan. And I ended up in a pretty negative spot post-show hormonally. But during that time, I was living with my parents and my sister and I had graduated college, moved back home, and like Alex said, planning a wedding. We had deaths in the family, um, long distance. There was a lot and launching my business. There was a lot going on, and it was a lot of stress for someone who did not know how to handle stress well. Not, I didn't know how to manage it. I wasn't great at communication. There was a lot of things that I did wrong in that prep, and I remember when I was in prep in 2020, my sister came to visit us in Indiana, and she was like, you are so different this time because obviously she was living with me in 2018. And I remember like towards the end, they basically felt like they couldn't say stuff around me. They couldn't do something because I would be set off. Um, I was very moody, like all these things where I hate that because again, it's not it shouldn't be everyone else's responsibility to deal with that. And I just didn't have a great mentality. And like I said, didn't know how to manage those different aspects. And so when she came and visited in 2020, she was just like, you're so much better. <laughs> you're much more pleasant to be around. You are much more go with the flow. And I think that I just had more confidence within what I was bringing. I had a better understanding of my schedule, my stress, the variables, and not causing myself to stress out. There's obviously always going to be stressors, as we have mentioned, a multitude of stressors, but not adding my own stress of letting my mind kind of spiral, of just knowing I know what I need to do and I'm going to do those things. So I feel like the 2020 prep was pretty good. I Outside of when shows just kept getting canceled, I did have a little bit of a breakdown. Um, but Alex was there to greet me with like, hey, if you've heard us talk about it, I think it was the YouTube actually after the first show of this season, the indie um, show. We have kind of like a 24-hour rule, or we do change that time depending on how big of the thing is. And he was just like, I mean, you have this time to complain about it, and then if you want to stop, we'll stop. If you don't, like, stop complaining. And that was really helpful for me. But going into the show, like Alex said, the most responsibility I've ever had and the most on my plate. And I think that the hardest part was the fact that I realized 
how much priorities play a role. Because within my other preps, I didn't have a clear enough image of what my priorities were. I didn't have a clear enough understanding of how it was all kind of working together. And at this point, I feel the most me I've ever felt. I feel the best, um, the most resilient I've ever been. I feel the most healthy I've ever been. Like there's a lot of things that I'm so proud of getting to this point. And I'm the most self-aware that I've been. And so I was able to take inventory along the way. And I know I said a few times of like turning my L's into lessons. Like that's probably because the question was the biggest takeaway of this prep. The biggest takeaway is like I was able to really be reflective and really take things in stride. But it was very difficult to make prep the number one priority because it was so clear what my other priorities were within the business and within our relationship that it was very difficult to recognize that I had to put myself completely first in a very selfish way, where of course you should put yourself first in general, or a lot of the times, not be selfish, but, you know, put yourself first and take care of yourself. But prep isn't necessarily like taking care of yourself. Uh, If I were to say like, put yourself first of like, take some time for yourself. Like I was putting myself first of, hey, my physique and everything I do needs to go towards my physique looking its best. And that was really hard for me to cope with especially towards the end of prep because of the other responsibilities I had. But I would say. But wouldn't you say that um, like within the aspect of not taking care of yourself, of competing, wouldn't you say chasing a goal and, and trying to accomplish something that's important to you be something of taking care of yourself? I guess it. I just like really struggled with like how selfish I was at the end and not like in a bad way. Like I wasn't mean about it. I wasn't like when you think selfish, you think of like this awful person, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not that I was like this like wreck bowling ball running through and I'm just selfish and everything revolves around me. I think I did a good job of kind of having understanding that things don't all revolve around me, but it's my responsibility to get the things done that I need to get done. But I was feeling at an impasse of feeling like we talked about in the last episode of that I wasn't giving to you and I wasn't giving to the business in ways that I knew it needed me. And that was like very hard towards the end of prep. And you're saying that was more important to you? The business stuff or the prep stuff? The business. Yeah, it was some, I felt like a very hard pull of like, yes, this is for you. And yes, this is a goal that you're going after. But what matters more in the long run of, does it matter more if like, for example, like we talked about of pushing six more weeks, Does it matter to push those six weeks or does it matter to show up for the business during those six weeks? Right. So would you say that it is like your priorities were you just recognize them more? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood how you're phrasing the question. (laughs) Go ahead with the next question. All right. It is summertime. And with summer comes vacations and needing to look like a smoke show at the beach. And that is probably you and wanting to get in the best shape of your life. With Physique Development, our one-on-one coaching is going to do that for you. So head over to physiquedevelopment.com and inquire to work with one of our coaches. Um, We kind of already answered the ones of, are you nervous to be done competing or how has your season ending changed your goals for a future prep? So those are in the previous episode, Um, but also got the question, what are your new goals and focus for life and exercise? Um, And my goals right now are just getting hormonally healthy, mentally healthy, physically healthy. Those are my main, main goals. Um, And then, of course, we have business goals that we're working on. Um, And then as far as like focus for life and exercise, we're training hard. We're getting after it. The sessions are waxing me for sure. It's a fun phase. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's one thing with reverse diets that I have found Uh, in years past. I have taken an approach of... um, being more conservative with the volume and letting the body rest. And this year I've actually taken an approach that's been more of 
uh, push food a little bit faster rather than being as methodical as I once was. And I'm training with greater intensity. One, I think clients are enjoying it more and they, they have the, the post-show energy kind of like pumping through them, uh, as well as just getting to have food higher right away and we can get closer to maintenance or get to maintenance faster so that we can establish hormonal health at a better rate as well as um, just feeling better in general. So that's been a, a nice little change for us this year, just my approach post-show, and it's been very successful for Sue as well. Yeah, and for some of his other clients. Um, but I think that's important to talk about just some different stuff within reversing as a whole that can be helpful when you're talking about switching your mindset. So that longer question that I talked about, um, this is from Kayla Weaver, and she said, I just competed, and one thing I found that I'm struggling with post-show is now that the hard goal is is over now that the hard goal is over of competing i feel lost in a sense i know the improvement season is here and it's a time to focus on that to have fun with training focus on strength which is all exciting to me but i still find that i'm struggling with not having the rigidity of everything i'm enjoying having more flexibility but do you ever feel this way if so what is something you try to focus on or to do to help with these feelings i'm about 4.5 weeks post show the feelings are slowly fading but i have those feelings of being lost that was such a long question. As I said, it was oh a longer gosh. one. I thought you were going to like consolidate it and you just wrote or like said a whole paragraph. So what's the question? Uh, she's asking about struggling post-show and the rigidity. And she said, I feel weird or a sense of guilt not being quite as disciplined within everything. Okay which I think that's a really great point. And I definitely have struggled with this in the past because in prep, you're like, this is a grind. I'm up, I'm doing my cardio, I'm doing my posing, I'm prepping my meals, I'm hitting everything to a T. I'm tired, but I like feel fulfilled because I'm proud of myself of getting to the end of each day. And then when you kind of go back into life, it feels like, oh, I'm just not working as hard. And I definitely think that that guilt has like... Um, come up for me of being like, I'm not working hard enough because I feel more recovered. I feel like I have possibly a little bit more time in my day. And then having more food in place can make you feel like you're just not pushing or working as hard. Or like the aspect of cardio of in the past preps, I've had really high cardio. So going from that like push of cardio to then going to like, oh, I'm, I'm not having this huge push of cardio can make you feel a little bit lazy, a little bit guilty, a little bit lost for sure. So what do you say that you normally talk to competitors about this? This is a, mostly about just changing what your perspective is or shifting your goal because you just had something that was very tangibly close all the time that you were working towards within the show. Once you get to like 16, 12 weeks out, it feels very close. And so now you are in a situation, if you're not going on to another show, that this improvement season could be a year, it could be two years, it could be even longer than that, or maybe you're not competing ever again. And so in that scenario, you've got to shift your focus and shift your goal to something that is going to have you excited as well as have you driven. So it could be something more strength driven, or it could be something completely outside of the gym and have you focusing on something within a, a business that you're wanting to build, a, a relationship that you're wanting to focus on, a uh, just a trait that you're wanting to develop. Really push yourself into another goal because if you just sit there after having competed and then you have nothing, there's, it, I mean, it's very easy just to sit and kind of sulk and be like, man, I feel lost. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to sit in that scenario. So have a plan moving forward. And as we talked about, I think this was on the last episode of just make a decision and push forward because what can happen post-show, um, many individuals, am I going to compete again? Do I want to go into my improvement season? How long do I want my improvement season to be? Set uh, timelines for yourself and, and put yourself in a situation where you make the decision and you get to that timeline, then reassess at that point. Yeah, I think those are great points. And I think it's also something of when your physique looks a certain way and the approval you get from other people, and especially if you're in the fitness space and you're a competitor, kind of going back to a normal body weight can be very difficult because all these people are praising your physique and fawning over it, or maybe you're getting more inquiries or more people asking you what you did because you looked a certain way. And now those lines are fading. You might feel like you're not working hard. So exactly what Alex said of put 
putting another goal in place, whether it's in the fitness realm or not, and recognizing it's okay to have different goals outside of fitness and to be working towards those. I think oftentimes we don't let ourselves have enough space with that is we think that, oh, because I've accomplished this within fitness, now either people expect that of me, I have to look this certain way, I have to do this certain thing. But truly taking a second to have an honest conversation with yourself of what do I want to do next? And if it doesn't have to do with competing, that's okay. If it does have to do with competing, that's okay. But being able to figure out what that next direction that you are going after and set a new goal. Goal setting in general is so beneficial for life. People go through life without setting goals, and then they wonder why they're not reaching goals. So take an honest look of when was the last time I set a goal? The reason that you might feel so lost, of course, there's that feeling of being lost after you hit a big goal in general, that there's research on that of that that lull or that feeling you have after you hit some big goal. And so give yourself some space within that, but also recognize maybe competing was the first time you truly set a specific, smart, measurable, attainable, you put a timetable on the goal, you made a smart goal. And maybe you've never actually done that in life before. So sitting down and writing out like the freaking acronym of SMART and making those goals for yourself moving forward instead of just, I want to get stronger or I'm really going to push it in the gym or I want my business to be better because that's going to leave you feeling very unfulfilled because there's not really a metric to track any of that. Very true. Awesome. You have the questions in front of you too, sir. No, actually, the uh, the Google Docs app on my iPad has now decided that it does not. Well, now it's coming back. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so no, I, I the David or those watching will see me fidget with this for like five minutes straight, and it just keeps um, going off. Okay. So the next question for us is that um, why does tan? Why does the level of tan matter for shows so much? Big thing here is that bikini um, and just competing in general, there there's guidelines in place for you to reach a certain look as a whole. And especially within bikini, it is basically a beauty pageant. Plus, you also have to have everything nailed down for your physique, look, everything. So you could have the best physique on stage, but maybe you didn't present it the best. Maybe your makeup wasn't the best. Your tan wasn't the best. Hair wasn't the best. And that goes into your total package because they are 100% looking for total package. So if your tan is noticeably lighter, darker, or leaning red or orange or green compared to everyone else, like standing, standing alone, you might look great, but it is something that you are being compared to and judged and they do have those guidelines that you have to hit. Correct. Um, the tan is just a part of the baseline. It, it's something that's kind of the introductory fee, uh, to being judged, uh, fairly on the stage. I feel as though that if, if your tan is off and especially not in the sense of it being potentially well, it, it too dark, but also too light is a just a, a big indicator. Oftentimes, that people will not be judged, uh, f- not fairly, but with the group necessarily. Yeah, uh, it's just a part a part of the game more than anything. Uh, next question here: uh, You mentioned the feedback wasn't what you wanted. How so? Well, um, it wasn't very helpful for not only how I placed, but how to improve moving forward and then in line with what judges were asking for at bigger stages. So for example, for the indie show, I was told that I needed to be um, a little bit leaner through my backside, which was true and we, we did accomplish that moving forward. But I was also told that I needed a little bit more upper body muscle, where the girl who got first place had less muscle than the other people on the stage. Again, I'm not trying, we mentioned this in the first one, not trying to take away from other competitors or talk down on other competitors, just sharing my experience and how it can be very confusing if if the person who got first place or second place was like 
jacked out of their minds and they had more um, in the aspects of the feedback, then it would make a little bit more sense. But the feedback didn't quite make sense in line with how I was being judged against other competitors, in my opinion. Okay. Do you want to go through all the shows or you just want to talk about the indie show? Um, For the... um, North Coast show, uh, my tan was obviously a a note there. Um, I was told that my lower body was overpowering my upper body a little bit. Um, And um, when I asked for further clarification, I was like, why did the people place above me and like kind of listed out different reasons? I didn't get much of an answer back. I was just told like, hey, the Um, scores are done based off of the averages of the judges. Um, So that was difficult because I I wanted to learn from each experience and especially from the judges because that's who's judging you. I want that feedback to know what are specific things that I need to change. And so it was just a lot of not clear feedback and not necessarily in line, like I said, with how others how it kind of laid out amongst everything. Um, And then when it came to the Francois show, um, got some pretty interesting feedback, being told that I had the uh, very great look. The person loved, loved, loved my look. Um, I could have been a little bit more confident within posing um, and that I have the full package, my tan, my makeup, my hair, my suit color, um, my muscle density, everything she loved. And so then I emailed back and I was like, hey, I really appreciate the kind words, but with this, I'm not really understanding if I have everything that you love, then why was I placed six? Um, And I got the response of there are other judges on the panel and we don't always see the same things. Um, So it, it was it wasn't what I wanted because it wasn't helpful for progressing forward. Yeah. I'll, the only thing I'll add is that my main thing was that there was not clarity in terms of why the placings fell as they they did. Um, because as I talked about in the last episode where I was frustrated because what I was shooting for with Sue's look was not being rewarded. It was a different look that was being rewarded, but I could not get a straight answer in terms of what was being rewarded or why it was being rewarded necessarily. And so that was my hang up with it for the majority of the time or still. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why it wasn't what I wanted. Um, and then um, I got a good question of, is there a point where you feel like you no longer need a coach and how you know? Uh, so directly post-show would not be the time that I would say would be a good time to go away um, or to feel like you didn't need a coach. Um, I think that there can be a point for sure that someone does no longer need a coach. Now, when it comes to competing, if you are continuing to compete, I would recommend you have a coach. It's just great to have a second eye. No matter what, I do not personally think that it is the best option to just coach yourself. I know some people do it and see success. It is not something that I believe that I could personally see success with. Um, So uh, there's probably going to be a point that we stop doing check-ins the way that we're doing them. But like I mentioned in the last episode, we'll always be collaborative on my physique as a whole. Um, But do you want to talk on a little bit of like, how would you know if there's a point that you no longer need a coach? This is a a tough question because I think that it depends on the uh, flexibility of the coach necessarily because I think that there are some coaches out there that just do contest prep and they're not even going to work with you necessarily in your improvement season. They're just going to be working with contest prep. So in that context, you're not going to be working with that coach any longer because of that singular factor. But in the context of a coach like myself, where there are going to be adjustments to lifestyle, there's going to be adjustments to approaches, how we're training, how we're fueling your body and those different things, there is is length to that experience. There's length to uh, that relationship as a whole. And so I think that as you were, I, I think the question you should ask yourself is that are you still 
having takeaways? Are you still learning things on a week to week basis, month to month basis from the person that you're working with? If you feel as though that it's just recycled information or you feel as though that you're not getting more in return from it than just having protocols given to you, then I think at that point, if you feel as though that that's the case, then you should move on and potentially go on to a coach that maybe is going to teach you something different or teach you something new. I think that would be a, a good route to take. I'm coming from a place of the coaching is there to educate and to put you in the best position to have a great understanding of your training and nutrition moving forward in a time where all of our goals are to, I would say at least, is to manage our physique in a way that we have a good understanding of our nutrition, a good understanding of our training to where it's just second nature. It's not something that we have to think about a whole lot. And so by learning more and getting more depth to your understanding of those factors is going to be a massive benefit. So until you're at that point, I feel as though that it's not going to be necessary to not have a coach mm -hmm. or it's it you want to have a coach throughout that whole time frame until you're at that place. So um, that would be how I'd approach it. And I think another thing to mention here is while, yes, I 100 percent I learn from Alex and I still get information from it, looking at what it adds to my life of me not having to focus on what my next training is going to be or what my next nutrition is going to be or anything like that. It takes the guesswork out and it allows me to just execute and get it done. And with how busy life is for us, it's really nice because I know a lot of coaches put themselves last and I would 100% do the same thing. I would really not prioritize writing my own training. I wouldn't prioritize like making sure I had what I need. I just know myself. So I always like it because then I just get to get what I need out of it plus the education, but it's very helpful in that regard. The other thing I think would be great to kind of tack on, it's not asked as a question, but just talking about how your relationship with your coach is going to change when you do transition from being a competitor or being in season to being out of season, because you're talking a lot to your coach going into shows as you get closer throughout the season, and then that relationship shifts as you go into an improvement season. So, Yeah, towards the end of the prep, you may be checking in twice a week, and then peak week, you're talking every day. So for seven days, um, you're in contact consistently with this person. And then if you have multiple shows, you're doing that multiple times. And so you build a, a deepened relationship than what you would have in the improvement season and those different aspects. And so it's a challenge to get into the reverse of that or to come out of it necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and so things to expect is that you're just going to go back to your um, the way you were checking in before the prep it itself. I think that it's a, it's a challenge for sure, but I think that um, your relationship isn't less valuable or anything of that nature. It's just what the relationship calls for at that time is different. Yeah. Good deal. So another question here, what are your personal post-show goals? So as I mentioned, my health is number one. Uh, but then also getting the cookbook out is a top goal for mine because I do have a little bit more time in my day because I'm not doing all of the prep things um, that I was previously doing and I have more energy from the food that has been increased. So the cookbook is definitely a goal. Um, and uh, personally, like not related per se to business or fitness or this overarching goal is just to be able to figure out what life looks for me, lo looks like for me post show and being able to give myself grace in that. Uh, because even just directly post show, the week post show, we went out to eat and I hadn't been out to eat in maybe 12 weeks. And that was really great just to be able to have that time with Alex and just being able to not have to worry about it's this time I need to eat at this time and I need to eat my own food and I need to have access to a microwave. It was just nice to be and to listen and to be present. And so uh, a lot of my goals just come with giving myself grace and really leaning into what is going to serve me best moving forward. So uh, another thing is, is that immediately after prep uh, ended, Alex said, we're not doing treadmill cardio anymore. We're not doing like scheduled cardio. You just have a step goal and one of your walks needs to be outside within the day. And that's been huge for me. It's been so beneficial for me. It really helps 
my mental health. There's lots of research on just getting sun in general, as well as getting sun in the beginning of the day, which is when I go on my walks, getting outside, getting away from screens. And so realizing that life is going to look different as I come into post-show, but really figuring out what's going to serve me the best and not comparing to, well, I was doing this and now I'm doing this. They are two completely different needs in life and they need different things out of me. And being able to recognize that and give myself that space has been like a really big goal instead of trying to just compare or be stuck in that prep mindset. The thing I'm looking forward to the most is going to see our friends because all of our friends are scattered all over the place. And so it wasn't something that we were able to prioritize a ton while while she was in prep. So I'm super excited to get back to traveling to see our friends. Yeah. And it was honestly, there was... (laughs) We talked about this after the show, but um, we went to go visit our friends um, when I was maybe like six weeks out or something, eight or six weeks out. I don't know. And that was like the hardest thing for me. I, Alex said, he didn't say it at the time, but he told me after he was like, I thought you might quit at that point. And he was like, that's completely fine if you would have. But like, I could see how much of a struggle it was. Um, and it, it's something where when you're only surrounded by competitors or just people in that lifestyle, it's easier, so to speak, to stay in that mindset. And I, in my day-to-day life, I was kind of in a routine, sucked into it. And then when we're around friends, all I wanted to do was like be present with them because we don't get to see them as often as I would like. And so I definitely second that. I'm just very excited to lean into that and time with like my family um, because while we moved here, nine, 10 months ago, whenever it was, um, it was the holidays and then prep started. So I'm very excited to have that quality time um, with family and friends. Um, Favorite memory from this season? I am not quite sure, but I will say one very great memory was meeting you, Ariel, um, meeting you at that first show and just being able to have you as a friend um, and have you as a confidant throughout the rest of prep um, and see you at Junior Nats was so special. Um, So that was a really, really special memory and you're a special friend, um, a special friendship, that kind of sounded weird, you're a special friend, a special friendship that I'm really thankful for that came out of this season. Um, for me, I think that the, the morning of your last show is a good memory for me. I felt very confident going into the day. I felt like the goal was accomplished. And like I said, in the, the last episode of, uh, just sitting and, and praying in my car before I took off, that was a, a moment that I'll remember, uh, for this, for whatever reason, it felt heavy to me. Uh, it felt very meaningful in that moment. So, um, I'll remember that for sure. I love that. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. A few more questions here. Uh, What are the biggest factors that help you be so successful within a reverse? It's a great question, and I'm sure we'll both have a good chunk of things to say. So number one is that I have been through multiple reverses. So this is my fourth reverse coming out of contest prep, and it's probably my sixth or seventh reverse total. So that does help of having the experience and knowing what to expect, what I'm mentally going to go through, what I'm physically going to go through. So experience does help, but if you don't have experience or maybe your past experience you didn't feel like you could properly learn from, Some really great things to do. It's going to be one, no longer body checking. When you're in prep, you are seeing new lines, new veins, new everything all of the time. And it's very easy to get into the habit of walking past a mirror and just pulling up your shirt and looking at your abs or looking for new lines. And that's not to say that I hide from mirrors or I never look at myself or check myself out, but not making my whole personality or my whole day about how my body looks like. So there's times where if you've been listening to this or watching the YouTube, you know that there's not mirrors. There are not mirrors in every room in our house. (laughs) And there's times where I get through a good portion of the day and I'm like, I really have not looked in a mirror today. And it's a nice and a freeing feeling to not just be analyzing my physique constantly, which is somewhat needed of you during a contest prep. Um, Another thing here is that I never buy clothes for prep. 
I will look ridiculous, and Alex will let me know, wearing clothes that make me look just ridiculous because they are far too big on me when I'm in prep. But like I said, it's not my first rodeo. And so going through the experience of buying smaller clothes and then liking those smaller clothes and trying to go back to a normal body weight, those clothes feeling tight um, can do quite the, you know, can be quite the, um, baggage on your mental headspace. And so knowing that, I just kind of sidestep the issue of I'm going to wear my clothes that are the clothes that always fit me. I'm not going to order any smaller sizes. I'm going to just wear this. And then when I get into my clothes, I don't feel uncomfortable. I don't feel them pinching. I'm not being like, oh, I have to buy bigger sizes. I'm just watching out for my mental headspace more than anything. The reverse itself needs to be a a situation where you and your coach have a conversation in what's going to be best for you. I think that that's the the biggest fault that comes into play is that there's only a a one size fits all for an individual mentally, physically, emotionally are all in different places. And so you have to have open dialogue and honest dialogue with your coach to be able to fine tune and create a plan that's for you. And what's working throughout the beginning of the reverse and as you're getting towards the middle or the end of it, it may be different than what was working at the beginning and so on and so forth. So be flexible and be honest and open with how you're feeling. I can't express that enough in terms of just being honest is is going to take you so much further in this scenario than trying to be tough and be like, I'm doing this all right, where you're just hiding the aspect of over consuming and and then you're showing up to your check-in. I can promise you if your coach is seasoned, he can, he has eyes, he can see the photos. I can always tell if an individual is not filling out the tracker correctly, very easily from picture one or the week prior or two weeks prior to now. And everything's perfect from a, a tracker standpoint. And I can see visually with the photos that doesn't add up more often than not. And so, um, honesty, people, honesty. Yeah. And we had a conversation um, before my reverse like officially started. And Alex was like, are you okay with me like really pushing up food and being a little bit more aggressive? And like you might see like you might be gaining body fat a little bit more aggressively. And I had to be honest with him of like, yeah, I I am. (laughs) I'll be honest in that. Yes, it's good for her health. But husband was also playing a little bit of a role there (laughs) because I do like her booty to have a little bit more bounce than what it has coming out of coming out of a show. (laughs) This is true. Um, <laughs> he was not being just a coach there. <laughs> I but, have had all of <laughs> But I mean, it was something of instead of just doing it and then not even telling me what his plans were and then me getting nervous and then seeing things happen, that's really difficult. So it helps as a coach, if you're listening the, to this, to have a conversation of what that person can expect, but also like Alex said, of what's coming up, what is going to suit you best? Because some clients, it does suit them best to be a little bit slower within the reverse. For others, it suits them best to get back to maintenance ASAP and to drop cardio as soon as possible. So it is going to really depend on the person and being able to be honest with yourself and with your coach is going to be huge in that instead of exactly like Alex said of just saying something because you think that's the answer they want to hear because I promise it's not the answer they want to hear when they visibly see that it's not actually what you want it to be. Um, So that's definitely a huge one. Uh, But also being able to be in the headspace that you still need to be on your shit leaving a show. So even if your food does go up, even if you do have some more flexibility, if you haven't eaten out, like I said, I didn't eat out for a a good chunk going into my shows, only food that I made. I'm not going to go and eat out for every single meal in a day, multiple days in a row. I'm also not going to throw myself completely off of my routine or start eating a million foods that I didn't have during prep or like throwing my body like way off. Your body has already been through a big extreme going through prep. And if you end prep and you think the next day, like prep is over, I'm good. 
that is where you are likely going to get into a frustrating situation or a bad situation because you still have to take care of your body. So really, like I said, leaning into what is going to serve you and taking care of yourself is going to be so huge. So um, while we have in the past like recommended, like maybe have like a trip plan for like eight or 10 weeks down the road. So it gives you that like momentum of like, I want to make sure I'm still hitting my metrics so I go on this trip and feel my best. Um, But I wouldn't recommend going on like six trips the week after your show and then having all these variables in place because you've just spent 10, 20, or 10, 15, 20 weeks locking down every single variable. So you don't want to just throw that up in the air and be like, let's see what happens. Um, And then the other thing that really helps me personally within um, reversing is knowing that I can't diet for forever, um, as well as I feel like people can have more peace if they understand what they need to change moving forward if they are going to continue competing. Um, And we'll touch on that because I want Alex to touch on that here. Um, But the other thing is, is understanding the effects of um, dieting and like what life looks like in prep versus out. So what really helps me instead of like yearning after, oh, I wish I was back in prep or yearning after that physique is being brutally honest with myself at what cost that physique had. And that physique costs a lot. It costs a lot of time. It does cost money just for everything that you're spending to make sure everything's locked down. Um, It costs time and it costs me like my libido. So like, not so to speak, but it did cost me a, like a libido and sex drive. It cost me quality time with family. It cost me all these different things. Was it worth it for the means to get to the goal? Yes. But that doesn't mean that that's the life that I want to live day in and day out. And so being able to kind of let go and shift your headspace is really, really great instead of always just looking back. But I want to circle back around to just knowing what needs to be done. For what? For like, it's easier to reverse if you understand like what the what needs to change before the next time you go on stage. Right. If you plan to compete again, I think that it's going to be important to understand what needs to improve within your physique for sure. I mean, that's going to be a, an important piece as you push into the the training as well as understanding your training to not be utilizing exercises and and potentially if you've got muscle groups that are in an imbalanced state or you've got um, greater quad bias and, and you're a bikini competitor that needs to have a, a greater glute and hamstring bias, for instance, uh, you have to understand exercise selection. You have to understand how the muscles are being worked uh, so that you can manipulate the training in a way that's going to facilitate you being better the next time you're up there. Because it's not just I'm going into train legs and I'm going into train shoulders and chest and back and I'm just going to do exercises that I know relatively train that tissue. Um, Because especially when you're trying to be elite at something, you've got to have better specificity and understanding of what's going on. And so um, having training that's specific for you is a really, really important piece because the, the time window in which you're going to compete is is very short. Um, individuals are really only going to compete for five to six years. And oftentimes that's kind of, of a long competing span. Like some individuals, most individuals honestly are going to be about two or three years. They're going to put in three years and be like, this is too much for me. And so understand that the window to actually compete or, or that it's going to fit your lifestyle is short and you've really got to maximize the time that you're in there. And so um, getting proper training is a huge part of that. Yeah. So with that, um, when do you know when you're in a good place to stop reversing and maintain? Um, When you're in the ballpark with the um, scale reading, probably that was what you had before you started the prep, as well as uh, restored hormonal function, as well as getting your sleep back into place. It's a lot of more, it's a lot more focused on your biofeedback markers than just a scale reading because individuals can have a really tough time post show and that scale reading can get back to that number much faster than what you would have anticipated. And so that's not the only marker you're paying attention to. You're paying attention to the biofeedback and the hormonal readings that you're getting um, to ensure that you're in the best place possible. Yeah. 
Um, so the last question here is talking about just more on peak week protocols and what we did differently from the first show to the next. Um, and we touched on this a little bit in the last episode, um, but I know that this person also asked for just more specifics of what all goes into peak week from a coaching perspective. Um, so do we want to answer that now or leave that for its own separate I mean, episode? I talked about I talked about the protocol in the in Monday's episode about if we did like the back load and front load and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like understanding the water intake, I'm big on water intake staying consistent. Uh, I don't think that there needs to be a water load uh, for the majority of individuals. It's more of keeping things consistent across all metrics. I've in years past have have taken more of an undulation or trying to manipulate the factors. Um, and, and sometimes that will put you in a place where you've got too many moving parts. And so I try to avoid the amount of moving parts to understand what's being changed to create the outcome rather than moving. Let's say that, uh, we drop water and then we spike sodium and then we, um, we take a free meal that we don't really know what the macros are on that. So we've got like five variables there that could have elicited a response, but then we're just like, well, it worked. So we're just going to redo all of it and rinse and repeat. And it's like, I'm sure that not every variable was the correct thing in that and something hit and everything else was just kind of like there. And so in that being my thought process, I'm very much more about singular movements or at least uh, maybe just two movements to make an understanding of, okay, this is what's actually eliciting this response. And we have greater control and consistency amongst 98% of the other things. And we have those two things that we're adjusting. And so, um, with sodium potassium, with all of the, the peak weeks, I think we're pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. I don't think we changed a whole lot. Um, Sue, just speaking on, on Sue as an individual here, she salts her meals very, very well. Um, sometimes too much for my taste buds to like for my meals, but, um, she salts her meals well. So the big thing for us is just making sure that water consumption stays up as well as there's not too much of an imbalance between sodium and potassium, because that is what's going to cause some of that water gradient to become uh, floating subcutaneously, if you will, and, and cause a watery look. So we just have to make sure that the lines are close. So that was one big thing there. Um, Um, No use of of diuretics. Um, I am a fan of utilizing dandelion root in years past. This year, I've I've moved away from it. I felt as though that some of the competitors that were utilizing it earlier in the year, it wasn't benefiting us. It wasn't giving us a a tighter look. It was was blurring the lines to to my um, interpretation of it. And once it's been pulled, I'm not seeing a negative effect. I'm not saying that there's been a positive effect of pulling it out, but I haven't had a negative response of individuals being watery on stage or anything of that nature. So um, dandelion root has been something I've utilized in years past. It's something that I've used with some competitors, but I'm saying as a, a grand scale of things, I've, I've had more success not utilizing it this year than utilizing it, but also depending on the person of how hard we had to push into peak week, because I may need it on the front end because we've um, accumulated so much inflammation because of how hard we're pushing with cardio or or what have you into the peak week. That wasn't Sue. So that doesn't necessarily apply here. Um, Cardio wise, we did list the entire time. Mm -hmm. Um, We didn't do any hit. We kept things pretty consistent with just tracking steps and getting uh, morning session, morning sessions in uh, fasted sessions. Training wise, um, from show to, or I guess with peak week. So with peak weeks, I'm going to take an approach of utilizing metabolic training. And so this is going to be more endurance based training in the general sense, but in the context and how we're utilizing it, um, for the, the peak week is that we're trying to upregulate the expense of the ATP or the stored glycogen that we have intramuscularly. And so we're wanting to deplete the muscle bellies and that's how we're going about the training. It's going to be shorter rest periods. It's going to be some pauses in the shortened position, more uh, exercises that are going to be emphasizing the shortened range. It's not going to be long sessions, 30, 45 minutes. Um, And we're going to get in, we're going to get out, and we're going to be focusing very heavily on recovery throughout the entirety of the week. So we're not trying to um, do really any muscle damage. We're more so in a state where we're 
like I said, trying to get as much rest as possible and not add more fatigue onto the body because now we're trying to freshen up. We're trying to put the body in a place where we are able to um, take the carbs in and store them intramuscularly and allow for us to have a nice balanced look as well as just adding more roundness to the muscle bellies. And so that's the goal within that training to where early on in the week, I'll be utilizing the metabolic work to work in a more of a depletion fashion. And I'll be decreasing the volume and putting ourselves in a place where it's more so just causing the signaling of, of the, the cells to be like, Hey, we need carbs over here. I would really love some carbs. Send them, send them my way, please, please, please. And that's what the training is, is in place to do. And so that's what we're doing as we get closer to the show, maybe uh, Wednesday, Wednesday session, Thursday session. And if we're training on Friday, that session is going to be that way too. So that gives you a little bit of a insight from a training standpoint. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you think would be beneficial for people to know either about my season or just about post-show um, in general? I know it's really vague, but just especially because you have competitors kind of going into post-show or finishing up their seasons. Um, some are still getting into their seasons, but um, anything that you've noticed with them or anything you think would be helpful for people? I think that the the biggest thing with competing always is patience. Um, it's very easy to get caught up in the social media aspect of things where you are getting a constant cycle, especially if you are very indulged into the competing scene of individuals being constantly shredded and constantly turning pro and constantly competing that you feel as though that you should be doing the same. And the reality is, is that we are plugged into an entire country and other countries billions of people you can see their content and you have the opportunity to take in what their life is and it's such a crazy time in life to have that opportunity and for that to teeter your focus on your own goals because you're uh, falling into a short-sighted visual perspective of this app it, it is frustrating um, but it only has become frustrating because I've been in I've been doing it for you know close to a decade now I know at the beginning uh, for me it was it was challenging I remember kind of like mentally battling through it and being like man I just want to be lean like I, I know I've put on more muscle and it's but it's like dude you're like four months post show <laughs> you haven't put on anything you just like you just restored hormonal function like yeah. what are you four months <laughs> four months you think that you've just accumulated all this new muscle tissue like the scale weight has gone up 20 pounds and it's like Yep. All muscle. No way. I, I'm, I'm still going to be shredded when I somehow lose this weight, but have more muscle. Yeah. And so it's, it's a matter of, of being patient. The person who's the most patient from a competing perspective and really allows themselves to put on, um, a lot of tissue and does not get caught up in the glitz and the glam and, and just continues to chip away are the ones who are going to win. Um, so if you can you know, take that to heart and you really love bodybuilding, you're not doing it for Instagram or YouTube or any of that. You're doing it because you love bodybuilding. Those are the individuals who are going to, to really excel. So, yeah. Well, that's a wrap on this season then. Um, I think you guys have heard quite a lot about me um, in my season, but I, again, appreciate the support throughout all of it um, and am just very excited for what this next chapter um, of life brings and all of the things that we'll be doing within PD, all the things that Alex and I will be able to personally um, just work on, accomplish, and go and do, explore. Um I'm, I'm sweating and I'm very hot. Yeah, I'm very hot. That's I, why I'm like. I'm glad you guys are not listening in this heat. <laughs> <laughs> or at least I hope you're not. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're not. I hope you're in a well air conditioned room and very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, my butt is sweating. I'm going to go get a popsicle and like go lay in the basement for at least 30 minutes. So <laughs> see you guys. Thank you guys. <laughs>